Want to know my secret to breeding guppies? Good morning, fishy folks. Happy Sunday fun day. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to talk about how to breed guppies. Um, I get asked this question quite a bit, actually. What size tank do you use? You know, when do you pull the mother? When do you put her back? What do you feed them? So <clears throat> we're going to go over all that good stuff today in this video. If you have any questions or see anything you like and you want to buy, you can always uh, email me at michaelsfishroom at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, it's a little too cold to ship still. Maybe when it gets warmer we'll ship. Uh, but if you're local to South Jersey, uh, probably we can work something out. I had somebody comment yesterday about Maryland. They said it's about four hours away. We could probably meet in the middle somewhere, but, you know, well, uh, at least let me know. Maybe we could work it out. All right, guppies. Very, very easy fish to breed. Uh, a fairly easy fish to keep. Um, my tanks are about <clears throat> in the low sixes for pH, but I've bred them in everything up to about 7.4. I'm sure they can breed up to almost eight, uh, but I've never done it, so I can't speak to that. Other water parameters, uh, just like every other live bear, they like the, war, the water. They like the water hard. Um, and temperatures, the warmer the temperature, the more they'll breed, but also kind of the quicker they'll die. We're not talking about if you have the water at 75, they'll live 10 years. If you have the water at 80, they live 15 minutes. But just know that. Uh, pretty much with any fish, the warmer the water, for the most part, the faster their metabolism works, which kind of burns them out faster. Um, the other thing about guppies, especially females, is um, I don't want to say it's common, but you can lose a female after she gives birth. It's very stressful, and sometimes their bodies can't handle it. <clears throat> so, how do I breed guppies? I'll show you. All right, fishy folks, here's my basic tank setup. I typically use a 10 gallon. Uh, I buy them for $10 currently at Petco. If you're a good Craigslist shopper, you can buy them cheaper. I bought 10 gallon tanks as low as $4 each. That's a whole nother video though. So we have a 10 gallon tank. We have a sponge filter in the back. That's a homemade sponge filter. Probably built it for three or four bucks big chump of java grass and java grass java moss and some floating plants and that's how I set my tank up the reason for the sponge filter they're cheap they're easy and you can't lose any fry that way the reason for the java moss and floating plants and it doesn't have to necessarily be java moss it could be guppy grass it could be a different kind of moss it could be you know thick plants that are rooted um, you need a place for the guppies to hide. So the guppy mom will go in there, drop 20, 25 fry or more. Um, and then the babies will hide in there so they don't get eaten because guppy moms and dads love little tender babies because they're delicious. So you need a place for them to hide. Now the other method is to use a breeding box. You put the mom in there, she drops her fry, the fry swim out. That's very stressful for the mom. I don't like doing that. It also takes work. You have to know when to move them. I just breed like this. It's easier for me and I get quite a good yield as long as there's plenty of places to hide. In addition, the babies can eat off the moss, the little microorganisms that are in there and on there, and uh, they grow up and look nice and healthy. Um, so that's how I set my tank up. Now let's talk a little bit about guppies where to buy guppies you can buy guppies from your local fish club auctions local breeders you can trade you can look for a craigslist or aquabid um, you can buy guppies at PetSmart or petco or your local fish store even now here's the thing with guppies and most live bearers if you buy them at petco or PetSmart or sometimes even your local fish store, if they don't quarantine, they could have issues. 
they could have internal parasites or ick or fungus or something. Ooh, this is going to be loud. Shut that off. These are the German blocks I just got. Everybody's doing well. Yeah. Um, so, you have to quarantine them. We all know the importance of quarantining. If you watch any of my videos, if you watch, yeah, that sucks. If you watch any of Corey's videos, you have to quarantine. And this tank right here is a quarantine tank. You remember I got these guppies at my local fish club auction. They're half blacks, two males, two females. And I only see three. Oh, there's the other one in the back. And even though they're from a local breeder who I happen to know and talk to and pretty much has the same opinion about quarantining as I do, I quarantine them. In fact, when I got these guppies from Corey at Aquarium Co-op, I know his quarantine procedure. I use it. <laughs> you know, he produces videos on it. We talked about it uh, before he even had the video out because uh, of how my system was set up. And when I got these in, the first thing I did was quarantine them. They went into tanks with meds and we quarantined. And it's very important to do that, especially with guppies and other live bears that you get. Because... Um, in most cases, especially if you buy them from big box stores, the conditions they're kept in and the breeders isn't ideal for them. Um, so that's my little ramble about quarantine. If you want to see how, how I quarantine, I'll put a link uh, somewhere for you guys to click on and go check out. Um, all right, food. Let's talk about food for guppies. They'll eat pretty much anything. Uh, they are small, so, um, you know, if you're going to do a pellet, you want to do, at l I would say the biggest one millimeter, but I like the half millimeter or smaller pellets. I use crushed flake food quite frequently. Um, I also feed frozen food, blood worms. Um, if you can get the small blood worms, that's even better. They're a little bit more expensive, so I don't get them. I let them eat the regular size blood worms but a cyclops is really good for them brine shrimp um, that's that's what I feed I primarily feed flake food uh, as you know to my breeding groups once a day and frozen once a day and that's how I choose to do it if if I fed frozen they may breed more frequently but for me the cost of frozen to high quality flake uh, with guppies, um, what am I trying to say? The cost to yield ratio, the, what am I trying to say? Damn it. It's right on the tip of my tongue. You guys are probably all yelling at the screen, you made, and I can't think of it. The cost analysis, cost price, damn it. All right. It's early. I have a high coffee. Please forgive me. Anyway, for me, it's just worth it to feed high-quality flake food. As you know, I just got some flake food from uh, Tyler at Fish Freaks Plus, and all my guppies love it. The Super Color Flake and the Angel Flake, they just, they devour it. Um, in fact, these two guppy tanks that we're looking at, these are uh, Black Pandas from Aquarium Co-op, and these are the Bluegrass, also from Aquarium Co-op. Um, let me tell you a quick story. So, I got these in. Um, I'll put a link to in here for you guys to watch that video. It was an unboxing video. And they came in super healthy. Put them in, I got a pair of each. Um, put them in quarantine. And the female black panda dropped fry and then died. So almost all these fish, actually probably all these fish in here are the offspring. Um, I probably have sold the adult male because I did sell some of these at auction. Um, and then, so, I had to be very careful with the male that was left and the babies. I didn't want to lose them, so... When I say careful, I didn't do anything different. I mean, I'm always careful, right? So, But you can see in there all the Java moss for them to hide in. 
There's mom even in a tank. Babies will eat on that. And so we just let this tank go. We we fed it. We made sure the water quality was good. And that's that. You can see in the back there's more fry. And this colony starting to reproduce. I Like I said, I have sold a couple pairs out of there uh, at auction. And stuff like that. Kyle, if you're listening, when it gets warmer, I'll send you your reverse trio. We'll work something out. Same thing happened with the bluegrass, except it took a little longer, I think. The female dropped fry and then died. And um, so I, I didn't want to lose these guys. I've never seen these guys around my area uh, at any fish stores. So that's kind of cool. But um, everything in here but that big male is all from the first fry and you can see there's at least two different drops of fry in there plus some pretty pregnant females how can you tell if a female is pregnant if she has a big belly like that and if she'll turn her gravid spot that dark patch underneath that means she's pregnant when she's when that big belly starts starts to square off that means she's gonna drop fry probably within 36 hours when it gets pretty square um, I find that guppies can, can drop fry as frequently as every four weeks, but that's pretty stressful for them. So, um, I don't really know how often mine drop fry because of the way I breed them. Um, if I only had one female and one male, I could probably tell, but with multiple females in the tank, it's hard to tell. Let's talk about culling. So for those of you that don't know, culling is removing damaged fish and removing them from the population. It doesn't necessarily mean killing them, it just means removing them from the population. So let's say a guppy was born with a broken back or a bent spine and it's genetic. You may, you definitely don't want to keep that in your breeding colony. You want to move it. If you cull it, and you give it to an Oscar or you know a bigger fish to, to eat that's okay that's the circle of life um, don't flush it don't clove oil it don't freeze it keep it in another tank you know let it live just let it live out its life but anyway that's just my philosophical thoughts all right fishy folks we're going to talk about a controversial topic, culling fish, which basically means removing an undesired fish from your breeding colony or gene pool. Could be something as simple as a bent spine or another genetic deformity, or it could just be colors that you don't particularly want. Um, some people think culling means euthanizing, but it could. But I choose not to euthanize. I choose to complete the circle of life. If you don't know what that means, it means I feed my calls to other fish. Um, this way, at least somebody's getting the benefit. If that's not what you choose to do or you think that's inhumane, okay, you're entitled to your opinion as I am mine. Um, that's it for the philosophical BS for today. I think that's about it for guppies as well. If you have any questions, like I said, hit me up at michaelsfishroom at gmail.com um, and hopefully I can answer your questions. Hope everyone has a great day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Maybe even uh, share this if you will. And you know, if you don't like it, if you want to give me a thumbs down, please, by all means, hit that dislike button. But if you don't let me know what you don't like, I can't fix it. Um, Every one of my videos pretty much has a dislike, and that's okay. I can't please everyone. But I keep saying this. If you don't let me know what you don't like, I can't fix it. All right, guys, gals, kids, adults, have a great Sunday fun day. Good morning, fishy folks. Happy Sunday fun day. <laughs> Here in New Jersey. <clears throat> Sorry, little, little blah. Want to breed guppies? So, you want to breed guppies?
Good morning, fishy folks. Happy Sunday, fun day. Hope everyone is doing great. Today we're going to talk about guppies. <clears throat> All about guppies. Good morning, fishy folks. Happy Sunday, fun day. Today we're going to talk about guppies. Probably one of my favorite fish. Uh, pretty easy to breed pretty hardy if you know what you're doing. I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but yeah, stupid. 